Greetings, and welcome to today's photosynthesis drawings. I'm your host, Mr. Adama, and I like to stare at cameras. Let us begin. If you have your drawing, this will be a plant cell, and we'll be zooming in on a chloroplast, and inside a chloroplast, if you look on the upper left-hand corner of your drawing, you see that there are these little stacks, like that. Those stacks are called thylakoids, and they have membranes, and that's where we're zooming in. So the big thing in your drawing, that's one thylakoid. All right, so let's dig in. Let me draw the thylakoid up on the board. And hopefully you can see that. So there's my thylakoid. And photosynthesis can be divided up into two stages, light-dependent reactions and then the Calvin cycle over in the bottom right corner of your page. Light-dependent reactions, as the name obviously implies, only work when there's light. So, they have four stages to the light-dependent reactions. Over here is a cluster of proteins. That's called photosystem 2. So I'm going to abbreviate that. P and a Roman numeral 2, photosystem 2. And what photosystem does is it captures sunlight. Captures sunlight. This is what plant leaves are doing. They're sticking their chloroplasts out there. Their thylakoids are embedded in the chloroplast. And this protein is a really a bunch of pigments, including chlorophyll the most important pigment in the photosystem. And when they do that, they capture the sun's light, and that gives them the power to do this. Water molecules are sitting around here that were taken up by the roots of the plant, and those water molecules get split all right, into a couple of different things. Oxygen, which binds to itself, forms an O2 molecule, and leaves, okay? So I'm just going to write this thing leaves. And that's kind of funny because it's happening in a leaf and it leaves, leaves. So anyways, that's the type of oxygen, the stuff we're breathing, okay? This is the step where photosynthesis produces oxygen for the world. Great. The other things that get produced here are hydrogen ions and electrons. So I have H pluses, I can draw a few hydrogen ions, and I've got some electrons, all right? This is kind of the opposite of the end of respiration where we made water. We're doing the opposite here in photosynthesis. We're splitting water. All right. Next, draw something that is kind of familiar, another electron transport chain. We had seen this in the mitochondria. Very similar, some of the same proteins. Same thing happens. These electrons flow down the electron transport chain. From photosystem 2, they're added to the electron transport chain, and the same thing happens. The hydrogens that were made over here, draw that arrow, those hydrogens get pumped up into the thylakoid space. All right. So we're filling the inside of the thylakoid with hydrogens. A little different than mitochondria, which filled the inner membrane space. We're filling the very middle with hydrogens. We're creating a concentration of hydrogens. You can probably guess what's going to happen later to all those hydrogens. No, 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 no. I, I said you can probably guess. Don't, don't shout it out now. Just guess. All right. These electrons, they travel down the electron transport chain. Their energy gets used up, but guess what? Draw another photosystem. Photosystem 1. So we have photosystem 2, photosystem 1. You might be thinking, why are they named that way? This one was discovered first, this one was discovered second. This one is a little bit more primary, this one adds things as needed. All right. So the electron that's the electrons that end up here. They started off high energy, but they got used. So they're now low energy electrons. So what happens in photosystem one is sunlight is captured. So we'll fill that in sunlight. Photosystems capture sunlight. 
The electron gets energized, so draw that energizer star from Mario or whatever around that electron. And there is a molecule of NADP+, NADP+. It's a lot like the enzymes NADH and FADH, slightly different, same function. A hydrogen, an electron that's energized, and NADP+, all join together to form NADPH. So NADP+, hydrogen, electrons, NADPH. This is a molecule that has hydrogens and electrons, we're going to use later. All right, last step. Draw the old sombrero. Same protein that was in the mitochondrial membrane is in the thylakoid membrane. What do all these hydrogens want to do? They want to flow out. They start turning this crank. They actually eventually get back over here, so you kind of have a cycle of hydrogens. They flow through here turn this and we take ADP and a phosphate, they are reattached into ATP. So we can generate some ATP energy. We got NADPH, we have ATP, we've created the energy. All right. This was the light LDR, the light dependent reactions. Now, I'm going to switch to blue because this black marker is kind of fading. I lost the cap, but I found the cap. Here we go. Over here, still in the chloroplast, but in the liquidy part outside the thylakoid called the stroma, there is a cycle. We learned the Krebs cycle and respiration. This is called the Kelvin cycle, discovered by Melvin Kelvin. Nerd. All right, Kelvin cycle is a series of chemical reactions. It's kind of the reverse of the Krebs cycle. Carbon dioxide comes into the Kelvin cycle. In the Krebs, it was a waste. In the Kelvin cycle, it comes in from the air. Plant leaves take it in through tiny little pores. Draw in the carbon dioxide. ATP delivers its energy to the Kelvin cycle, Kelvin cycle, and then returns as spent ADP and phosphates. So it will get remade here, input its energy, and then head back over there to get re-put back together. So we have a little ATP, ADP cycle. NADH does the same thing, puts in hydrogens and electrons, and then heads back as NADP plus. Back to there. Okay, got my arrows. So the high energy molecules input their energy into the Kelvin cycle. What happens is this. Um, every time around, that's a three, three carbon dioxides come into the Kelvin cycle. They run the energy. And what pops out, that's an arrow, blue arrow, is this molecule, okay? Three carbons, one here, one here, one here. It's called uh, G3P, G3P. Calvin cycle goes around again, pops out another one. And what do you think happens? The two G3Ps join together to form a molecule of glucose. Congratulations, we did it. World's best cup of coffee. Hashtag Alf the movie. So that's how glucose is made, starting way over there with the light dependent reactions generating the energy, and then the Kelvin cycle creating the actual products running off of the energy. And they're basically taking three carbon dioxides to build one side, three more carbon dioxides to build the other side, joined all together, you have glucose. Now a plant can make glucose and glucose and glucose and glucose 
and they can use the sugars right away in a mitochondria, or they can link them together into a long chain of carbohydrates called a starch, or they can make them super long and a cellulose and build a new cell wall around the cell or for a new cell, or they can put them in a fruit or vegetable and I'll eat it. And I can utilize the sugars they made. If they don't make the sugar, I got nothing because I can't do this. Thank you, plants. If you haven't thanked a plant, turn right now to a plant and say, thank you, plant. Maybe give it a fist leaf bump. Bye.